If you're one of those people that are really rough on their phones, so you often drop your phone, or perhaps you're a tradesman, you need a phone that can take a few knocks, drops, water resistance, splash resistance, and something that's overall is gonna be solid, you often break your phones, then this might be something to look at. This is the Yulifone Armor 6. This has a Helio P60 in it, so unlike the previous models, it has a slightly newer chip, it is faster, and you do notice the performance difference with this one here. So there are some specs right up here if you want to see all of those specs listed out. And following that is uh, some time codes there. So feel free to skip ahead to whatever part of this video you would like to check out about this rugged IP68 phone here. In the box, the phone comes with a pre-applied screen protector. You get an additional screen protector, a user manual, a fast charger. This is using MediaTek's Pump Express, so 12 volts, 1.5 amps. And there's a current promotion that you get a 10 watt wireless charger too as well. That's the QI standard. And then we have the red Type-C to USB cable. We have a Type-C to USB adapter there for your on the go. And of course, a 3.5 millimeter to Type-C adapter. This phone sadly does not have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And you're probably wondering why is there a plastic pry tool in the box? And that is because the covers over the ports they are a little tricky to get out, especially if you don't have long fingernails. The phone is a thick 13.6 millimeters. That's with the camera bump. It's its thickest point and a heavy 267 grams. So it is a chunky big phone. The phone has a metal and rubber housing to it like other durable phones here. So this rubber housing is going to protect the screen, the corners where it will most often hit and just bounce off that. Solid rubber there. This is why the phone feels so heavy. It does feel really solid in your pocket. It's pretty big with that 13 millimeters and the weight of it too. So it feels quite chunky as mentioned. So we've got the metal on the side that does say shockproof. Um, I personally wish that it didn't actually say anything, but you know, it doesn't look too bad. That SIM tray on the left is covered with a gasket, of course. This is part of that IP68 rating that it has. Now, if you happen to break off this gasket, eventually they're going to wear out. The one on the Type-C port is going to be the most susceptible. It's both a pro and a con, I see it. So the pro, of course, it's not going to get dirt and dust in there, especially in the Type-C port end up blocking it. But the con, of course, is that eventually it's got rubber in there, and that's going to wear out eventually. And that will one day you might end up losing it. And once you lose it, then you can kiss goodbye that uh, IP68 rating. And that's of course why we do have the wireless charging on this model. So they put in that 10 watt fast wireless charging. So you can use that instead of having to plug it in every day. And that's going to help. And hopefully that will mean that if you try not to use this gasket, open it all the time, it'll last a lot longer and you retain that IP rating. On the right hand side you will find another piece of metal there on this side and then our metal volume and power buttons. So these buttons, they do have a quality feel to them. They feel very solid and you can see there it does say waterproof on the side. And those two cameras on the rear, they can do an average portrait mode. So we've got a 21 megapixel sensor paired up with a 13. If that can be believed because other material was saying it was 16 and 13. So I don't really know there. Now those little holes on the back, those are microphones. Along the top there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this. So they decided to ditch it probably for that waterproofing. They just found it too hard, maybe too expensive to do that. And you can see it does say IP68 on the top. So it has an IPS screen. This one has a maximum output of only 360 lux. So it's not super bright. So if you're in a really bright environment, direct sunlight legibility is average. And yes, it does have a notch, which is housing our 13 megapixel front facing camera. There is a status LED to the right of the earpiece. Now the earpiece, I sometimes question the quality of the earpieces in these waterproof phones or ones with IP ratings. They tend to be a little bit muffled, but it's not the case here. It's only muffled when a bit of water gets into it, but when it doesn't have any water in it, it sounds good to me, very clear, in fact, surprised me. Apart from that slightly disappointing maximum brightness, I feel it should be a lot more for a rugged outdoor phone. The gamma isn't too bad. It's a little off here. You can see about 2.1, 2.0. It should be 2.2. Blacks aren't super deep as you'd expect from an IPS panel. Overall, when you look at real world images, they look okay. They're fine. In fact, the screen, I feel the quality of it is actually better than the likes of the Honor View 20, the V20 that I reviewed that mobile phone. So it has a very minimal amount of IPS bleed, and you don't really see too much of that. A little bit of a dark 
patches around the notch, but it's very hard to see. Nowhere near as bad again as that View 20 I looked at. It is covered with Gorilla Glass. Now, of course, I put that on there, but I don't know what version it is. I believe it could be 5, because that is a tougher, more uh, drop-resistant screen. The phone is powered by that OctaCore Helio P60. Now, this one puts out around about 130,000 for the Antutu score. This isn't a bad score. The performance of the ROM, in general, I find to be good. It's reasonably fluid. We've got six gigabytes on, of RAM on here, which I believe is helping a little bit with that multitasking. So when you go through that, uh, you do see sometimes a little bit of slowdown. What I've noticed is sometimes the app launch time can be a little bit slow, but overall for the chipset it's got on here, I find the performance to be reasonably good. So it is an running Android. This is 8.1 that we have on here. And as you can see, it has a November security patch level. So that's getting a little bit dated. Now there was an over the air update. This was bug fixes, but it didn't increase that patch level, unfortunately. Out of the box, you don't really get any bloatware with this. Perhaps the game mode, the translator they put on there. And yes, it does have FM radio, but you need that Type-C 3.5mm adapter or plug in a Type-C headphone for it to work, of course, because it acts as the antenna for the FM radio. Now, if you're a tradesman, you might want to use some of these here. Maybe not. They might not be actually that accurate. It's just using sensors after all. But there are some tools on here in the app called Toolbag. One of them which measures UV light. So you can see right here, that is our UV sensor. It's going to tell you whether we have extreme UV rating, moderate, and that'll just let you know. Now for free space, you get here, you can see over 100 gigabytes free. So that's not too bad. And the storage speeds, these are good. These are respectable. It has an eMMC 5.1 spec drive on here. So no problems with that. I've been in an outdoor kind of phone. Yes, GPS does work reasonably well. It's not going to lock onto every single satellite. Accuracy will hover around the four meter mark. So if you're going to go hiking, tramping, mountain biking or whatever, at least it does get a quick lock and it seems to keep it, which is the main thing. 4G reception is excellent. In fact, it's even better if you can trust those bars than my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. This surprised me. I'm getting very good downloads through it and the reception, call quality as well. I've made some calls and I find that it's excellent. The mics seem to be all right. The mic on the bottom there. So that is good. Now our wireless speeds, they are really good. However, I have noticed that the wireless range in my testing at home is not as good as other mobile phones. And I believe the culprit is our metal body around this and all that rubber is affecting the signal strength a little bit. It's just not as good as it could be. You can see here with wireless analyzer with other phones, I'm getting a lot better signal strength. So bear that in mind that the wireless signal isn't the greatest, the strength on this one. The Armour 6 has face unlocking, so I'll just demonstrate that now. So the power button on the side, tap that to wake it up, look at the camera, and it unlocks. It's normally really quick. The fingerprint reader on the back as well, well, it's not the most accurate. I have noticed that it will probably work maybe every eight or nine times out of 10. So I'll just demonstrate it now, touch it, and it unlocks. It takes about one second. So overall, it's not too bad, and it's just that accuracy could be a little bit better, I feel. So what about the cameras? Now, normally these kind of phones, the focus is not really the cameras. It has very average cameras on this, as expected. So low light is not great. Video quality, I will give you some samples, but only a short couple of samples. Up to 1080p maximum, so there's no 4K on this. And you see the uh, standard kind of MediaTek setup here with a few tweaks with the camera app. The viewfinder often does suffer from a bit of lag. So this is our video. It does not have any electronic image stabilization. The microphone quality is average and I've noticed that sometimes the focus goes off as well. So 1080p max, no 4K with this. It's not amazing quality. It is better than some of the other MediaTek phones I looked at, but you can see there that focus struggling to get a proper lock here. Now, if you do plan to record in low light, expect very poor quality. As you can see that it's not amazing. It's a little bit choppy. And with the front facing camera, if you wanted to shoot some vlogs or something like that, it's only 720p max here. So quite a low resolution. I was hoping for at least 1080p with this 8 megapixel sensor, but it's uh, not the case here. 
So you are able to game on this phone and the frame rate, most of the games I've been testing, is quite fluid. It's a lot better, this Helio P60, the GPU they're using, than the previous Mali GPUs they had in the older MediaTek chipsets, and you do notice that. Now, of course, some games that are really demanding ones, high graphics, you will need to alter the settings, just lower things down a little bit so you get a more playable frame rate. But overall, I think for the most part, most of these games, they're going to be running well, smooth frame rate. Now, it does generate a little bit of heat, I've noticed. So after, this is Lineage 2, after about an hour of gaming, it was getting quite warm just around this area here. That's on the normal settings. So do expect a little bit of warmth after gaming for a while. So the phone has a single loudspeaker just on the back here. That's it, right there, that little gap. And I'll give you a sample of it just a second. So I mentioned before that voice calls do actually sound really good on this phone. Now, if you use a 3.5 mm adapter to your typical headset, the quality is fine. It's nothing to rave about. I didn't notice any static or any problems really with it. Taking a look at our battery stats now. So it is holding up well. It does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is a large battery. And you can see screen on time, almost nine hours. I haven't made many calls. I need 10 minutes in total over the period of a day. Wireless has been on and also the Bluetooth there as well. So I think you can possibly get maybe 10 hours out of this. It's gonna last most people two days, possibly even three. So it does have good battery life. Charge time on the Armor 6 here is approximately 2 hours and 20 minutes to fully top off that 5000 mAh battery. So if you get the offer with the free wireless charger, it is a 10 watt QI standard one and has a good build to it, very nice. You can see metal on the bottom all rubber around the outside so it's not going to slide off a table or anything like that. Now charge times are quite a bit longer, this is 10 watts that it's charging at and it takes just over 3 hours and 40 minutes to fully charge. So you'd probably just do this at night before you go to bed. So who is this phone for? I feel hikers, trampers, tradesmen, someone that's rough with their phone. So you're a plumber, you keep dropping your phone, you keep knocking it around, and you've cracked the screen on your phone a few times. This doesn't mean the screen is not going to crack on this one, of course, because it just depends where you hit it. If you did have this fall on top of a rock, then it's possible you're gonna crack the screen on this. Now I know I haven't shown you any durability tests. Why is that? Uh, well, I don't believe in smashing up perfectly fine tech. Even dropping it, it leaves marks on the rubber on the outside, and I do actually need to sell this on to recover my costs of this video. So that is why, if you don't think that's a little legitimate reason, well, there'll be other videos out there that I'm sure that will be doing those kind of tests, so check those ones out there. So you buy this phone, I feel, for that durability. And of course, the extra speed you get. So other durable phones, the ones that have IP ratings and that, they've got normally weaker chipsets. This one's a little bit more powerful and two, 230,000, uh, six gigabytes of RAM, reasonably fast storage, 128 gigabytes of that as well. So no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is a little disappointing there. We do have a status LED on the front. Voice calls are very good. 4G signal reception as well, surprised me. It's quite good. And the voice calls sound a lot better than I was expecting with this phone. There's a one weakness that I did pick up on and that is the wireless range compared to my other phones, I believe because of the metal housing on this is inhibiting the signal a little bit. So wireless that is on the 2.5 gigahertz band and 5G with wireless AC just doesn't seem to have that range uh, that I would really hope for in a phone like this. The screen as well could be much brighter. This has been advertised as a hiker's phone, a tramper's phone and if you're gonna be using the GPS out there, you wanna see the screen well for that, and maps where you're going, and it could be a lot brighter than what it is. You can make it out in the sun, it's just not amazing there either. Uh, speaking of not amazing, the cameras, the video quality, so you wouldn't be buying a phone like this at all for the cameras. And the battery life, good. Uh, you can probably get over 10 hours. I was quite hard on that, there's continual battery test that I do, and I wasn't taking it easy, so the battery life, I think, is definitely two to three days on this one. Good standby battery consumption as well. So thank you so much for watching this review. If you liked this video, please do give a thumbs up there. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more up-and-coming reviews just like this one here. Bye for now.